morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines overnight, police say a man is recovering after being shot. It happened on the city's northwest side. We have details just ahead. The race for a coronavirus cure. I'm Alex Brashay in Washington, coming up why some health experts believe we might have a vaccine by the end of the year. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's 77 degrees. When I walked out this morning, it felt a little cooler. I like it. Mike will let you know about that in just a bit. I like that. A little cooler? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is July 29th. You know, sometimes you just don't know, like, am I going crazy or does it feel a little cooler, or a little I, breezier? I think you're right. It was a little comfier this morning. We're going to call it small victories. Every victory counts. It does. Mike joins us now with a look at... Yes, sir. Humidity is down just a little bit, just, I mean, just, a, just a smidge, mm -hmm. but it makes a lot of difference mm -hmm. when it's down ever so slightly. So did you get rain yesterday again? No. Oh, good, because I was going to be really mad if you didn't. <laughs> I didn't again. So uh, some folks did get some showers again yesterday, and uh, this loops back on through the satellite radar picture. Obviously, things died down at night, but uh, we will have somewhat of a repeat of yesterday because, as you can see, there's sort of that still kind of a almost a little bit of circulation right here along the coastal plain. So there's still that disturbance hanging around, which is going to allow the atmosphere to maybe touch off another couple of uh, showers later on today. And yeah, dew point temperatures are down. Yesterday, we were up around 73 or so for a dew point. A couple of degrees makes all the difference in the world. And so, yes, it is slightly more comfortable. We've got some 60s out there. Now, I mean, it's still humid, but yeah, you step outside and it's just not like a just a wet blanket on top of you, basically. Uh, mold is on the high side. It definitely went up yesterday, more than double of the previous day's reading. 98, just like yesterday, partly cloudy skies, and one or two of those showers going to be popping up later on today. After that, may kind of even turn off the small chance for some rain, but it should return to start off the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday morning. All right, no accidents to report right now, but some construction, usual construction here on westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. There you can see we already got some orange color there, meaning it's moderate to heavy traffic. Um, everyone's probably going to have to exit the the access road there at Bernie Stage and get back on on Ralph Fair. Uh, but usually this clears up by 6 a.m. This is westbound, meaning it's coming from 1604 to Bernie. So just keep that in mind if you head, have to head that way. Trans Guy 35 at Evans looking good right now. Traffic flowing very smoothly there. 35 and 1604 looking great right now. And let's do one more. There's that construction on 10 at Bernie Stage. All right, everyone, have a great start to your morning. Mark Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, a man is recovering after he was shot during an incident on the city's northwest side. Happened just before 11 p.m. near the 4800 block of Gus Eckert, south of I-10. Police got a call from a citizen who heard the victim yell that he had been shot. The man was found by police at University Hospital with a gunshot wound to the knee. SAPD is still trying to figure out details of the shooting. Well, now the latest on a shooting on the east side that started as an argument between neighbors. This happened at a home on Poinsettia last night near Walters in Houston. Police say a man and a woman were arguing when the woman left to bring someone else over. That's when guns were drawn and shots were fired. Officers say two men were shot, one man in his 40s, the other in his 30s. No word on what the argument was about. Police say they do have a person of interest for this case. Human remains found on the south side of the county. The Bear County Sheriff saying that the uh, body was so decomposed they can't determine an age or gender right now. Discovery was made by a man walking his dog earlier yesterday. It happened at the 1500 block of Los Soya, south of 281 and 1604. Bear County deputies say the remains were found near some barbed wire fencing. Sheriff says if you have a missing relative and think this might be that person, contact the Sheriff's Department at 210-335-60. 7-0. Investigators are hoping to learn more about the case through forensic evidence. Bear County is seeing a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases and deaths. More than 1,500 new COVID-19 cases were added in Bear County for a total nearing 38,000. 
and 12 more deaths were reported for a total of 335 people. If those numbers seem high, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says that's because the cases reported daily don't necessarily reflect a 24 hour period of infection. These new cases are from over a period of from about a week. He says starting today, the city is going to be giving a daily update on the seven day rolling average, which will be a more reliable number to track the total infections. Also, Judge Nelson Wolf says 20 to 25 percent of people in local hospitals were from outside of Bear County. At last check, we have about 12 percent of staffed hospital beds available in our area. 1,045 people are in hospitals with COVID-19, 413 in ICU, 283 on ventilators. Meanwhile, documents from FEMA show nationwide deaths from the virus have increased by 30% over the last week. But there is new optimism as a second promising vaccine trial gets underway this week. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. This morning, there's renewed optimism in the search for a coronavirus cure. Moderna's vaccine test is showing promise. Seven of eight primates injected with the vaccine showed no detectable virus in their lungs just two days after exposure. The company is now in the critical final phase of human trials, with pharmaceutical giant Pfizer hot on its heels. In an interview with our station in Dallas, Health and Human Services Secretary yes. Alex Azar said this. It is, it is very credible that we could have um, tens, the high tens of millions of doses of FDA authorized or approved vaccine uh, this year. The clock is ticking, especially in places like Florida, the state marking its deadliest 24 hours yet, 191 lives lost. This report from the White House Coronavirus Task Force urges 21 states dubbed outbreak red zones to put more restrictions in place. We are still seeing significant outbreaks occurring from birthday parties, graduation parties, um, family reunions. It wasn't just me being an outliner. Dr. Burks was saying the same thing, that one is universal wearing of masks, avoid crowds, close the bars. Images like this mass church gathering in San Diego County and this benefit concert in the Hamptons raising concerns from health officials. They're called super spreader events. No social distancing, no masks. But despite the messages from his top health experts, President Trump is once again downplaying the COVID-19 threat and spreading misinformation on a discredited treatment. Uh, many doctors think it is extremely successful, the hydroxychloroquine. Joe Biden firing back. People are losing faith in what the president says. You're not going to listen to the guy who says been lying to you. And it's not just Joe Biden taking aim at the president's claims about hydroxychloroquine. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the overwhelming prevailing clinical trials have found it not effective against the coronavirus. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. With less than 100 days until the election, presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden says he will choose his running mate next week. The former vice president made the comments during a news conference after a speech in Wilmington, Delaware yesterday. Biden didn't indicate whether he would publicly announce his selection, though he will likely do so before the Democratic National Convention kicks off on August 17th. Biden has said he would choose a female running mate and has faced increasing pressure from the Democratic Party to choose a woman of color. President Donald Trump will be in West Texas today as he sh as his shifts his focus to American energy dominance. The president's visit will include his first tour of an oil rig. He will be visiting Double Eagle Energy in Midland. The White House says the president will talk about how the U.S. is achieving energy dominance by cutting regulations, simplifying the permitting process and encouraging private investment in energy infrastructure. The president will also raise money for the Republican Party and his reelection campaign at a fundraising luncheon in nearby Odessa. Wall Street will try to recover today as negative earnings reports and no deal on a pandemic stimulus package led to a day of selling. Hopes for a stimulus package that boosted stocks Monday fell to the background as lawmakers continue to bicker on the details. Investors also groaned as McDonald's and 3M became the latest companies to report lower than expected earnings. The Dow lost more than 200 points. The S&P 500 fell 20, while the Nasdaq composite gave up more than 130 points. Just about 440, 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Major League Baseball is being forced to cancel games as some teams deal with a coronavirus outbreak. And next, the Spurs finally pick up a win, this time against the Pacers as they get ready to start the regular season again. This Later this week, we'll have some highlights. First, let's take a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees. 
The muggy meter has gone down just a smidge. Mike will tell us about that when we come back. San Antonio Spurs getting one last scrimmage in yesterday against the Pacers as the team gets ready to restart with official games later this week. DeMar DeRozan and Rudy Gay came out strong for the Spurs. Rudy Gay would score 14 in the first half. Spurs only down one at the break, 60 to 59. In the third quarter, Spurs go on a 15-2 run. Keldon Johnson would finish with 21 points. Rudy Gay led the Spurs with 23, including a big dunk. All that effort got the Spurs their first win inside the NBA bubble. Final score 118 to 111. Will Hardy, who interviewed for the New York Knicks head coaching job, called the shots for the Spurs and was asked about Keldon Johnson's performance. Keldon tonight was special with his energy. You know, he's a he's a really hardworking kid and, and brings a spark of, of energy and life when he comes off the bench. So uh, his defense tonight, him getting out in transition was huge for us. Next up, the regular season officially restarts. San Antonio Spurs facing the Sacramento Kings on Friday, starting at 7 o'clock in Orlando. That 7 p.m. start is San Antonio time. I'm so happy we got one scrimmage in. And I watched every minute of it yesterday just for fun. Was it fun? Yeah, it was great to have him back. 443, uh, uh, let's see, yeah, just about 443, 77 degrees. Well, still ahead, a cannon stolen from a local American Legion post has been found. But we'll have the latest from the police on the search for suspects. And how Major League Baseball is reacting after a surge in coronavirus cases. In this morning's GMA First Look, America's national pastime versus the pandemic, the Major League Baseball season just started. The Miami Marlins season has already stopped for now. After an outbreak of COVID-19 in the Marlins clubhouse, MLB has put the Marlins season on hold. Oh boy. The Marlins were supposed to play the Washington Nationals this weekend. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm scared. Right now, you don't know, if, you know, because of my heart condition, what happens you know, to me if I do get it. This all comes just six days after the start of the long delayed MLB season. I think it's the, the shell shock component is how quickly it deteriorated. So can this baseball season survive these setbacks? And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver as the NBA gets set to tip off their regular season. With your GMA First Look, I'm T.J. Holmes, ABC News, New York. A World War II artillery piece believed stolen Sunday has been recovered by San Antonio police. It's back where it belongs outside an American Legion, Legion post rather on Fredericksburg Road. Police are working on making an arrest in the case. Jesse De Goyado says American Legion members are grateful but still puzzled as to why it was taken. It was about 3 or 4 a.m. when the tow truck dropped off the missing cannon. Hours earlier, SAPD had called, saying what they found in a storage unit at 1604 in Bulverde was likely theirs. And I couldn't believe it. I was ecstatic. I said, oh my God, yes, thank you. The first vice commander of the American Legion Alamo Post II, Carlos Mendes, says it's believed a tip about suspicious activity led to its discovery soon after that. I spoke to three different officers and each one of them was highly concerned. They went to it and they found it. They tracked it down. Very impressive, says Mendes, since these American Legion members were skeptical they'd ever see it again. Part of an Eagle Scout project, the pair of World War II era cannons had been restored six years ago. They'd been anchored down, yet the thieves cut the chains and dragged away one of them. It's not every day that you see a cannon rolling down the road. How it was hauled away is unknown, along with why it was taken. But having learned of the theft has been a wake-up call, they say, for other veterans groups around the country with similar static displays. They're very vulnerable to the theft, as you can see. We never thought this would happen. Shame on you for even taking it. That was yesterday. Now these veterans have this message. You really thought you could get away with something like this? Oh. Don't mess with veterans. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Glad it's back. Oh, yeah. 449, let's check on traffic. We know it's awfully early. Nick, how are things looking out there in your department? Well, right now we've got a major accident, Mark. This is going to be southbound I-35, the far right lane. It's right before the off-ramp to westbound northeast Loop 410. It's going to be right here. you got some transguide footage over there. So there's I-35. It's near Whirlwind Drive uh, there on southbound I-35. This accident looks about 20 minutes uh, old now. 
um, and it looks like they already towed one of the vehicles uh, off the scene. So hopefully it can be getting this cleared up uh, very soon. But just be careful if you're heading that way and to watch out for those first responders. Thank you, Nick. I think Sarah will agree. It felt like it got up to 100 degrees yesterday here in San Antonio. 98. So yeah. hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, up in the upper 90s the previous day, and we're going to stay in the upper 90s, and there, which means, you know, that's the one thermometer out there at the airport. So especially over to the west, we're on the Rio Grande Valley, a lot of triple digits. Well, it tends to be this time of year that the tropics are about our only relief. There's uh, there something actually there's a little spot in the Atlantic mm -hmm. that the hurricane center is watching. So and I was looking at the website today and says, OK, it's got an X there. It says right. nine like tropical. Well, it's potential tropical. Depression. It's potentially potential potential. Yes, but they're doing all the, the planet safe, you know, track for it and everything like that. But it's not not quite. A tropical depression. Anyway, uh, here's what the uh, sunset looked like yesterday. It was a uh, very nice out there, but it was a warm afternoon. 77 in town, low 70s hill country, and uh, we've got a little bit lower humidity. It is down, dew points are down just a couple of degrees, but that does make a lot of difference when you step outside this morning. Uh, so it's just not that like yesterday it was just a, a steam bath out there. Uh, the humidity will be dropping down somewhat this afternoon. We're still going to have dew points in the 60s, so we'll still have a bit of a heat index up into the triple digit range and again been saying all along just get used to that because it will be sticking around so here's the a uh, little bit of a counterclockwise rotation in the atmosphere and this is kind of moving on out of here so this is going to be the last day that we'll see a couple of the scattered showers but this is the reason why we had some scattered rain around here on monday yesterday and there will be a couple of showers still scattered about the area later on today not a lot, but just a few of them out there. Computer models, which going through the morning hours, uh, maybe a few showers developing along the coast there. Same thing as we get into noontime. And then by mid-afternoon, a few more of these are going to start to pop up. And, of course, yesterday there was a really nice, right around dinner time, that outflow boundary, a little... Uh, kind of mini front, if you will, from some of those thunderstorms that blew on through. It was very, very windy, uh, but I was hoping for rain in my backyard. Didn't get anything. And then this afternoon, and by dinner time, we will have a couple of more of those showers out there, and that's going to pretty much be it for at least a couple of days as far as any rain chances. But we do have another chance of rain coming in here by the weekend. So 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature. We get up into the upper 90s. Uh, it's going to feel like it's in the low hundreds. Couple of showers here and there and mainly east of I-35 tomorrow and Friday pretty much turn off any rain chances other than you know a stray one along the coast 99 degrees i'm kind of hesitant to go 100 yet but you know it seems like everything has been trending a little uh, a little warmer but uh, i think also temperature is going to be down somewhat on saturday a few more clouds better chance for rain about a 30 35 percent chance for a few showers on saturday and one or two of them going into next week but it stays hot all the way saturday the only day we're at 95. I did see triple digits yesterday in the weekend. It looks like I, I can, yeah, I, I kind of like that it went. A I kind of you know just, eh, I don't want to you know. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 4:53, and uh, temperatures running right now at 77. Thank you very much, sir. And up next, Kanye West's run for president is far from over. We'll tell you about his latest plans for his campaign. Kanye West is still running for president and a record number of black actors get Emmy nominations. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Here's to us. Succession, one of the success stories out of Tuesday's Emmy nominations. The HBO drama grabbing 18 nods, including two in the lead actor category for family patriarch Brian Cox and Jeremy Strong, who plays his son. And Cox tells me pitting father and son against each other is very much in tune with the show. I mean, there's obviously going to be some competition. There will be, you know, probably. He's a young man, so he'll probably feel it, you know. I kind of, and I kind of, there's an element you go, mm, yeah, okay, okay. So, but, you know, we'll just, we'll just see how it falls out. The Emmys air September 20th on ABC. As for diversity, a record number of black actors got Emmy nominations from Pose's Billy Porter to Watchmen's Regina King. A little over 34% of the slots went to black actors, the highest number ever. But other races, including Latinx and Asian actors, were significantly underrepresented. Kanye West run for president far from over. He just filed the necessary paperwork to be on the ballot in New Jersey and Missouri. And a source close to the campaign tells ABC News they're making a robust plan to target other states, including New York. 
And happy birthday, Getty Lee, the Rush singer and bassist, is 67, while fashion guru Tim Gunn is also 67. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's about three minutes till five. You're watching GMSA. Still ahead in our next half hour, the latest on President Trump's historic deal through the Defense to Production Act to produce critical products to battle coronavirus. A new deal between AMC theaters and Universal Studios could shorten the amount of time movies play at theaters. We have details ahead in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Two people are rescued from a fire just north of downtown overnight. We have the latest coming up. And President Donald Trump announces a deal to produce key pharmaceutical ingredients to combat the coronavirus. A little more comfortable out there this morning regarding the humidity. We've got a few clouds over downtown. We'll talk to Mike about your forecast. Congratulations, everybody. We made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, July 29th. Hump day. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Let's go straight to Mike and get the latest on our temperatures for today and the rest of the week. Well, let's get start off with the a little bit more comfortable this morning because uh, temperatures, I mean, we're still on the above normal side, but um, is my the computer not going to work for me again? Did I get everything? Let me just make sure I have everything turned on here for this. Yep, you know what? It's acting squirrely on me. I apologize. I'm supposed to have a nice little thing popping up here and go through all that. But we're just going to take a look at uh, live cam right now. And uh, the... Uh, well, darn it all. Anyway, uh, let's go to radar and you can see that we do have a couple of showers well down there to the south of us. And like yesterday, we still had this little bit of a disturbance hanging around here and that is going to help out with some more showers and even a couple of thunderstorms later on this afternoon like we had yesterday. If you can kind of uh, imagine the center of a wheel is right here, maybe about Laredo and it's spinning in a counterclockwise direction. That's that little bit of a disturbance. And so that's going to take some of this moisture and continue to throw it on in here. So we'll have a few of these showers still hanging around here or, or developing, I should say, as the uh, afternoon rolls on. Not much this morning, but by mid late afternoon, kind of like the same time to, time frame and time scenarios yesterday that we'll have some of that rain developing. Mole is on the high side, 2930. It more than doubled from the previous day's reading. So cloudy, warm and humid this morning and a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, upper 90s. We did hit 99 yesterday, going right up there in the upper 90s again today. And after today, I think we get rid of any rain chances. It's a little bit hotter. We're going to start to see a few more hundreds around the area. The weekend, a couple of showers, mainly on Saturday. Actually, rain chances, they're not great by any stretch, but a little bit better on Saturday. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, Nick? Not much right now, Mike. So the accident we had on 35 and Thousand Oaks, or the, right there by the off ramp of 410, is now cleared up. So that's good news. A lot of green on the screen there. Uh, let's see what else. We still have construction westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. This is coming in from 1604 towards Bernie. Uh, the main highway is shut off at Bernie Stage Road. You're going to have to exit Bernie Stage. Won't be able to get back on the highway probably until Ralph Fair Road, I believe. So just keep that in mind. Usually this construction is done by 6 a.m. Hopefully it is today as well. Drive times eastbound 151, 1604 to 90, 9 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. Great times there. Taking a look at Trans Guy 35 at Evans, flowing smoothly right now. Not bad at all. And 35 and 1604 looking great. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Well, thank you, Nick. Firefighters had to pull two people out of a building that was on fire early this morning. It happened around 1 in the morning in the 800 block of San Pedro, just north of downtown. Fire officials say the fire was in an apartment above a bar and was caused by a faulty window air conditioning unit. The two people pulled out of the building were not hurt. Firefighters estimate the damage to be around $10,000. New this morning, a suspect is now in custody following a shooting that happened back in June. According to an arrest affidavit, 38 year old Terrence Clay is accused of shooting two vehicles at a gas station, the 1200 block of WW White Road. Police say they found two victims whose vehicles had been hit. No word if anyone was hurt. The affidavit says Clay was the an ex boyfriend of one of the victims. He was taken into custody and charged with deadly conduct with a firearm.
Some scary moments at Bronick Lake Park late yesterday. A couple capsized in their kayak and another boater had to jump in to help. The area is near Calavetas Lake that sits just off of I-37 and Donup Road. Firefighters say the couple was on a kayak when it overturned and at some point they could not right themselves. The woman was able to get free, but the man was still underwater. A passerby was able to pull the man from the water. When emergency crews arrived on scene, firefighters say they were able to stabilize the man and take him to Mission Trails Baptist Hospital. We are nearing another grim benchmark in the pandemic here in the United States. 150,000 deaths. As CNN's Whitney Wild reports, this as President Trump announced a historic deal with Kodak to produce key pharmaceutical ingredients. Uh, the vaccine looks like it's really heading in a very rapid direction and very positive direction. Pfizer announcing they're combining phase two and three vaccine trials. As President Trump announces, he will give Kodak a $765 million loan under the Defense Production Act to produce critical pharmaceutical ingredients at a facility in Rochester, New York. But it's going to be the renaissance of the great state of New York as an industrial power. This as coronavirus cases surge in at least 22 states. North Carolina setting a new record in COVID-19 hospitalizations, ordering a statewide shutdown of alcohol sales in restaurants after 11 p.m. We do not want to go backward. Florida breaking its one day record in number of reported coronavirus deaths. We've got to get the virus down. We've got to get our contact tracing in place. We've got now as the virus strikes Major League Baseball hard, multiple games have been postponed. I don't believe they need to stop, but we just need to follow this and see what happens with other teams on a day by day basis. That includes Tuesday's match between the Yankees and the Phillies. And after more than a dozen people on the Miami Marlins team tested positive, the team's games are now canceled through at least Sunday. I think you know, MLB did the right thing. You know, uh, it's all about keeping keeping us safe. At the White House, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Mixed messages. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg says state leaders are putting lives at risk with their back and forth changes and backpedaling regarding the reopening of schools this fall. Attorney General Ken Paxton says local health officials have no authority to shut down all schools in a non-binding guidance statement Tuesday. Shortly after that announcement, the Texas Education Agency updated its guidance saying it will not fund school districts that keep classrooms closed because of local health mandates. Districts that want to stay on virtual learning past four weeks must get TEA approval if they want to receive funding. That's a change from what they announced just a few weeks ago. Every time it seems that our attorney general appears on the scene during this pandemic, it creates confusion and chaos and it leaves a wake. And that confusion and chaos uh, could cost lives this fall. We're hoping with the outreach and with conversations with them and, uh, and unfortunately having to deal with the, with the litigation that was filed by Cornerstone, uh, our expectation is that we will get compliance, voluntary compliance uh, by the private and religious affiliated schools. There's no attempt at all to stifle any religious messaging or any re or practice of religion. The city attorney says they hope compliance will be voluntary, but non-compliance repercussions could range from citations to more extreme measures, they say. Governor Greg Abbott has said the decision to reopen schools would be left to local governments. The demand for aluminum cans has increased due to more people drinking at home from the pandemic, and some San Antonio breweries are feeling the impact. Greg Spickler with the Alamo Beer Company says draft sales across the country have dropped, but says there is a spike in can sales. Lester Jones with the National Beer Wholesalers Association says the problem is demand exceeding supply. We have a hard time getting our 12-ounce sleek cans because of the seltzer craze. Um, but as far as our 12 ounce uh, standard beer can, we're able to get those right now at the moment um, because we're getting a blank can and we're putting a label on it. Um, if we were a brewery who had a printed can, we would be experiencing some extremely long lead times. So in 2019, we had a shortage of some seltzers because they, they had planned to make only so much of it and demand had exceeded those plants. And here we are again in 2020, and demand has exceeded what they planned for. The pandemic forced Alamo Beer Company to make difficult decisions, including letting go of some employees. Spickler says sales have gone down, but the company is still offering curbside options 
and selling their products at HEB. Yeah, we're seeing that aluminum shortage affect uh, uh, store supplies as well. I wonder if we're going to go back to glass bottles again. And uh, we're seeing more of that for sure. Right now, uh, it is 509, 76 degrees. A deal with movie theaters. We'll have some of the biggest movies launching on streaming even sooner. We'll have more details just ahead. Everybody hates student loans, but sometimes feels like you'll never be able to pay them off. Up next, we'll just tell you some of the best things you can do to be free of your student loan debt just a little quicker. And I like that it's gone down one degrees, <laughs> one degree, 76 degrees. It was 77 earlier. Not as muggy when you step outside this morning. Mike will let you know about your full forecast when we come back. It's no secret paying off student loan debt can add extra stress to our lives. Even though the pandemic has impacted the economy, federal student loans have been halted until September of this year. To get you prepared for repayments, Max Matsey gives us some ways to tackle student loans. Getting a college education is important, but the costs associated with it can be overwhelming. If you find yourself struggling, Consumer Affairs has some tips to make it a little easier. First, make a realistic budget when it comes to loans. It's always best to pay back what you can afford each month rather than emptying your wallet. It can also help to keep track of your monthly payments. Next, try exploring income contingent repayment plans. Most of the time, your monthly payment will exceed the amount you can afford. If that's the case, the federal government offers options that may lower your monthly payments. This may take longer to pay back your loans, but a little still goes a long way. You can also try applying for a job with student debt forgiveness. Several companies offer positions that include this, but most have strict rules in the contract, like working for a specific amount of time. If you're unsure if your current company has this plan, check with your HR department about benefits they might offer. Lastly, refinance your loans into a private loan. Experts say this can be an easy way to lower your interest rate. If you have a stable job or decent credit score, ask your bank about refinancing options. Before you make a commitment, it is important to do your research and talk to your loan providers. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 514, 76 degrees. Still ahead, fans of the Jurassic World series, listen up. A brand new animated series is coming to Netflix. We'll tell you when it will debut. And more big blockbuster movies could be coming to streaming platforms sooner than ever before. We'll tell you why next. This year, the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's is everywhere. On every sidewalk, track, and trail across this country. All of us are raising funds for one goal. A world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. Because this disease isn't waiting, neither are you. Take the first step on your walk right now. Go to alz.org slash walk. Well, it's time for wrinkles. Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair. We've got the retinol that gives you results in one week. Not just any retinol, accelerated retinol SA. One week, it's all it takes. Neutrogena. We've come a long, long way together. I have to praise you like I should. 518, the chief executives of the world's biggest tech companies are preparing to appear on Capitol Hill. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, tech CEOs are set to be grilled by Congress. The heads of Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook appear before a House subcommittee today to address worries their companies are stifling growth. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos' written testimony calls the global market large and extraordinarily competitive. Bezos' ex-wife McKenzie says she has donated $1.7 billion since her divorce. She says the money has gone to causes including racial equality and climate change, among among several others. Her fortune is still believed to be around $60 billion. AMC and Universal Studios have reached a deal triggered by the pandemic. They've agreed to dramatically shorten the time films must play in theaters before playing on demand. Movies will now play in their theaters for just 17 days before hitting streaming services. Those are your Tech Bites. Just about 520. We're going to check in with Officer Nick. How's the traffic out there? 
Looking real good right now, Sarah. Things are looking smooth all around the city. A lot of green on the screen here, which is always good news. Still have a little bit of construction on westbound I-10. It's completely shut down there from 1604 going towards Bernie. Just keep that in mind. Hopefully this clears up by 6 a.m. But uh, this uh, main lanes of I-10 are still shut down at Bernie Stage Road. All right, Trans Guide looking good there at 151 and 410. 35 and FM 1102 looking great. 410 at Fredericksburg flowing smooth and 10 at Callahan East looking amazing. Thank you, Nick. Love to see wildlife in action. Yep, and this picture is a really good reminder. Make sure if your animals are outside at all, lots of fresh water. For Especially them. the domestic ones. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, I don't think these are their <laughs> pets, but uh, yeah, these folks are looking for a little bit of a drink of fresh water out there. So yeah, make sure and they have plenty of shade if animals are outside at all. Just keep that in mind uh, for well, really the foreseeable future. Obviously, it's a bit more comfortable this morning because we've got slightly lower dew point temperatures. If you recall yesterday, we had dew points across the board. We're up around 74. There's some 76 and 77s, which is just it was steam bath kind of humidity out there. So it is. I mean, it's still humid, but a little bit more comfortable. We will keep dew points in the upper 60s. Now these are afternoon dew point temperatures. They're going to be staying in the mid to upper 60s through the weekend into the first part of next week. So which means we will be having heat index readings to deal with for the uh, foreseeable future. All right, down to the south, you can see that counterclockwise spin. This is the water vapor imagery. That's that little disturbance that was uh, right around oh, south of Houston yesterday and has been sort of sliding across the area. And this is what has been kind of keeping the atmosphere churned up just enough to give us those couple of showers that we had around here yesterday. A few showers, a few thunderstorms. It's going to be the same situation again today. We will have uh, not much out there uh, throughout the morning hours, but then by mid afternoon, we are going to be seeing a couple more of those showers. Now this computer model tends to, of course, sort of broad brush it in. That doesn't mean everybody south and east of 35 is going to be uh, seeing rain today. But again, those chances of some rain. Once we get into tomorrow, uh, maybe a little bit along the coastal plain. That's pretty much going to be about it. Pretty much zilch on Friday. Then Saturday, this is when we have a kind of a, a little bit of a change to the pattern. Now, don't get excited when I say change because temperatures are not going to be changing. It's still going to be hot throughout the entire seven day forecast, but we do have this little bit of a disturbance trying to slide down here from the north, and this is probably the better or the best chance for some rain. Not fantastic. 30 maybe in some places a 40% chance for a couple of showers around here on Saturday and then Sunday maybe just back to the uh, sort of scattered variety. So it, it is nice to see this little hint of a pattern change, but again, it is not anything overly substantial as far as a broad change in the weather as the month changes. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 98 with a couple of showers out there and we're going to be staying definitely on the hot side going for some 99s tomorrow Friday, which means a lot of folks will still be seeing some triple digits. Um, even yesterday we had 99 at the airport. New Braunfels hit 100 yesterday, so don't be surprised even in your backyard and then that little bit better chance for rain on Saturday. Well, we know it's hot. See if this helps 149 days till Christmas. I, I don't know. You don't, don't doesn't know. really help. No different kind of pressure. I. Yeah, it just it's just a whole nother thing. I didn't mean to overwhelm. I, I just feel so overwhelmed. <laughs> Far toward Christmas or that first cold front that moves through. Yeah, that and I if I had a date, uh, I, I'd be that right. And that, that yeah. could be, you know, September. It could be mid. October. Right. So, so keep me posted. <laughs> maybe, Give okay. us that date, yeah, please. Maybe it's 140 days out. Who knows? 523, 76 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a brand new animated Jurassic World series is set to debut on Netflix soon. We'll have a preview when we come back. Monday. Welcome back. Some new guys are getting in on the Emmy nomination action. Plus an animated series takes summer camp to a whole new level. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. This is so cool. What was that? Return to Isla Nublar in Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Six teenagers get more than they bargained for as dinosaurs turn their summer camp into a survival test. The animated series debuts September 8th on Netflix. The part you guys never seem to realize is that you don't have the power anymore. And frankly, I've let you bozos handle this long enough. 
We are doing this my way. Several new streaming services made their marks in this year's primetime Emmy nominations. Apple TV Plus, which launched last November, collected 18 nods, led by eight for The Morning Show. Disney Plus, which also debuted in November, did that one better, taking 19 nominations, 15 of them for The Mandalorian, including a nod for Best Drama Series. And Quibi, the short format streaming platform that just launched in April, received 10 nominations, including nods for Lawrence Fishburne and Stephen James for Free Ray Sean. The 72nd Primetime Emmy Awards are September 20th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 76 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, why some health experts fear the start of the new school year could result in major spreading of the coronavirus. Big tech before Congress, a preview as CEOs from Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google face questions from members of Congress on excessive power concerns. And Starbucks is bringing back the pumpkin spice latte. We'll tell you when you'll be able to get it. Good morning. It's midweek, Wednesday, July 29th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And it felt wonderful to walk outside with just a little, a little cooler. A bit of a break from the humidity this morning. We'll take what we can get this time of year. Mike Osterhage. Yeah, yesterday was like walking into a wet towel. And this morning, it's still humid out there, but it is a bit more. You kind of walk outside and go, Am I? Yeah, it's like, am I feeling this? Yes, yes, you are. So uh, warm and humid, obviously not as warm, though, or not as humid. And uh, we're going to be up to right around 90 degrees today at noon and then upper 90s, a couple of stray showers around the area. Um, any rain is pretty much going to be dying down once we get into the evening hours. Any of these showers that do pop up, some folks did have a couple of them yesterday. It's going to be a sultry evening. And we've got some, you know, nothing in our vicinity as of right now, but here's some of these showers that are starting to pop up down here along the coastal plain, and they're sliding up basically to the north. The little disturbance that was hanging around here, uh, right uh, about south of Houston yesterday, has sort of slid off to the west a bit more and so centered almost around Laredo. And so that counterclockwise rotation will continue to uh, help to touch off. And with the afternoon heating, we'll see a few more of these showers kind of touching off later on today. Boy, mold really shot up about double from the uh, previous day's reading. And again, temperatures are going to be getting into the upper 90s later on today. It's going to be another steamy one. That doesn't even take into account the humidity, which will make it feel like the low hundreds. So that'll pretty much be the call all weekend long. Perhaps a slightly better chance for some rain. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Been pretty quiet up to now. Anything big going on, Nick? Yeah, it's been real quiet this morning. A couple accidents we had. Other than that, things look great out there. A lot of green on the screen. Highways are clear. If you're headed to work, unless you're going to I-10, uh, you're going to make it there pretty fast. But here, I-10 at Bernie Stage still shut off there. Those westbound lanes um, from 1604 going towards Bernie. They've been closed down all morning. Hopefully they get opened up here soon. But just keep that in mind. I-10 West is shut down at Bernie Stage Road. All right, Trans Guide 35 and 1604 looking great right now. Nice and smooth there. Let's see what else we have. There's the construction at 10 and Bernie Stage Road. Hopefully that gets cleared up very soon. 281 and Winding Way. That's looking great great as well. All right, everyone, just make sure you wear that seatbelt. We want you to get to work safely. Sarah. Thank you, Nick. An air conditioning unit appears to be what caused things to heat up inside an apartment just north of downtown. San Antonio firefighters say that AC unit started a fire there overnight. Our Katrina Weber is live in 800 block of San Pedro near I-35. Katrina, we understand firefighters found some people inside that apartment. That's right. They described those people as being homeless, and they told us that the apartments were abandoned. Still, they believe that somehow a faulty AC unit started this fire. It broke out just before 1.30 this morning. The firefighters found smoke pouring out of the front windows. They put out the fire and then brought in a ladder just to check the roof and make sure the fire had not spread. They told us they found two homeless people inside that apartment and brought them out, but there were no injuries. Now, if you look, the apartment is just above the reggae bar, which, according to its Facebook page, had been open as recently as Monday and serving orders to go. It does not appear that the bar uh, has any damage as a result of the fire upstairs. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. There are more than 4.3 million known COVID-19 cases in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, some fear the start of the new school year could result in major spreading of the virus. 
There's a lot of unknowns as students return to school this year. We all have a lot of questions, a lot of confusion, but we are, you know, we're in this together. We're kind of, we're all equally confused. That uncertainty extends to the White House's coronavirus task force. We don't know the full impact. We don't have the total database of knowing what there is to expect. Despite the ongoing threat, some governors are pushing for schools to reopen. Our kids are at the least risk from this virus and much lower risk than they are from seasonal influenza. Our kids also play the smallest role in transmission of the virus. But some health experts stress those students don't live in a vacuum. If the school serves as a place of spread, then we have a situation that goes well beyond the school. American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten says her group is allowing safety strikes as a last option if educators feel that they're forced back to school in hazardous conditions. This is not how I want to go back, and I want to go back so bad. Because <laughs> I I love teaching, and I miss my classroom, and I miss my kids. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Right now on KSAT.com, our back to school page is up and has everything you need to know as you try to navigate what school districts are doing because of coronavirus. We have a running list of all the start dates by district as well as answering the questions you want to know, especially about possible risk. We also have details about an HEB coupon that will save teachers up to $50 off school and office supplies and the latest on tax free weekend, which will take place. August 7th through the 9th. Back to school will look different this year as some districts are delaying the start of in-person school and starting off virtually. We also want to hear from you. Parents and educators can be a part of our classroom confessionals. We already have a long list of responses that we've posted and you still have time to enter yours. Our back to school coverage will continue over the next several weeks and you can find all the latest on ksat.com slash back to school. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Near Houston, a small plane crashed in front of a Harris County home. It happened on the last leg of a training flight. The pilot was in training. The pilot that was in training was supposed to land at three airports as part of a cross country flight scenario. None of the instructors were on board since the flight was required to be done solo. According to the DPS, the plane lost power while flying 7,000 feet in the air. The pilot and another passenger on board were taken to the hospital for injuries, but no other injuries were reported. America's milk industry is seeing some major changes. Retailers like Kroger and Walmart have now built their own bottling plants. Wall Street Journal says that allows them to cut prices to levels traditional bottlers can't match. As a result, two of America's biggest dairy producers were sold this year after filing bankruptcy and closed several processing plants across the U.S. 537, 76 degrees. Still ahead, Budweiser rolling out a national ad campaign for its first non-alcoholic beer. And next, a preview as the CEOs of the world's biggest tech companies get ready to appear before Congress. Why does Zuckerberg look so, so nervous? <laughs> anyway, outside with live cam, we have some morning clouds, lots of humidity out there. How hot will it get today? Mike is standing by with the steamy details. Now to the historic hearing today on Capitol Hill. Tech CEOs will be grilled by lawmakers. Some of those lawmakers claim companies like Google and Amazon have too much power. ABC's Alex Bershay has those details. This morning, the chief executives for the world's biggest tech companies preparing to appear on Capitol Hill for a historic antitrust hearing. Amazon's Jeff Bezos, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, Apple's Tim Cook, and Google's Sundar Pichai, a group that includes two of the world's richest men. They're expected to face questions over whether the size of their companies stifle competition. In his prepared statement obtained by ABC News, Zuckerberg will tell lawmakers that companies aren't bad just because they're big, adding Facebook became successful the American way by starting out with nothing and providing products that people find valuable. Zuckerberg telling a Senate committee two years ago that Facebook has a lot of competitors. It's the, it's to email the same to service you provide. Well, we is, provide a number of different services. Is Twitter the same as what you do? It overlaps with a portion of what we do. You don't think you have a monopoly? Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like that to me. Okay. <laughs> 
Bezos, who's never testified in front of Congress before, will focus on his personal background in his prepared remarks, calling himself a garage inventor who, as a teenager, invented an automatic gate closer out of cement-filled tires, a solar cooker out of an umbrella and tinfoil, and alarms made from baking pans to entrap my siblings. Some lawmakers have repeatedly argued for the breakup of big tech companies, including Senator Elizabeth Warren. You don't get to be the umpire and have a team in the game. But many financial experts insist big tech companies benefit the economy, including the vice chairman of Morgan Stanley, who recently told CNBC, what would we have done during the pandemic if we didn't have companies like Amazon? As for Apple's Tim Cook, he's expected to address criticism over Apple's App Store, which is the only way that iPhone users can download apps. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. We'll see how this plays out. 542, 76 degrees. And Starbucks is bringing back one of its most popular drinks. We'll call it the PSL. We'll tell you when you might be able to get it. That's code for something. 545, unemployment, domestic violence, and of course, COVID-19. As the pandemic goes on, these issues could increase the potential for child abuse and neglect. That's why our KSAC community partners and the Children's Shelter are teaming up for a child abuse awareness town hall today. We'll have a panel of experts answering questions about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. Again, it airs this afternoon from 2 to 3. You can watch it at KSAT.com or wherever you stream our KSAT TV app. The King of Beers is jumping on the alcohol-free bandwagon. Today, Budweiser will roll out a national ad campaign for its first non-alcoholic beer called Bud Zero. The beer, which had a soft launch in March, is supposed to taste similar to regular Budweiser. I wonder if that's Bud Heavy or Bud, you know, Bud Light. But an extra bonus, it will only have 50 calories. Former NBA player Dwayne Wade, who is now an entrepreneur, helped create and taste to help create the taste and the packaging of the beer. He says his goal is to give people an option to socialize with drinkers, but skip the buzz or hangover. Beer sales have been going through the roof during the coronavirus outbreak. Big news for Sarah Costa. Starbucks famous pumpkin spice latte is coming back. The chain announced the drink will return sometime this year, but didn't give a specific date. Last year, pumpkin spice lattes returned in late August. You may also be able to get the popular drink quicker than ever before. A company in a company earnings call, Starbucks also announced more locations will have curbside pickup, drive throughs and mobile only pickup stations. More than 400 Starbucks locations will close as the company undergoes restructuring plans. The goal is to move toward convenient coffee houses. Barbie for president. Mattel, the company that sells Barbie, unveiled a new 2020 campaign line of dolls. This is a look at the line up this is the look for the lineup that features four figures. The company says they each play a role in the election process. One is a candidate, another is a campaign manager, a fundraiser, and a voter. Along with a new brand of dolls, Mattel is teaming up with a nonprofit that supports women running for office called, quote, She Should Run. Both organizations say their goal is to inspire and educate future leaders. Time to check in with Officer Nick Solis at the San Antonio Police Department. Hey, thanks, Mark. Yeah, things are looking good right now. A lot of green on the screen. No accidents to report. A little bit of construction on I-10, which we've had all morning. Hopefully it gets cleared up very soon, but it's westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. Taking a look outside at the Trans Guide. 10 at Callahan East looking good right now. Nice and smooth there. 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds looking great. And uh, let's do one more. 10 West at 1604 on the northwest side flowing smoothly. Before we get to KSAC Connect, yep. Mike wants Pets. to talk about... The San Antonio Humane Society. Yes, indeed. Of course, there's lots of fun ones to adopt out there. And these are the ones. This is oh. a Mariah, <laughs> two-year-old retriever. Who's a good girl? Very Why is girl. it whenever you see dog pictures? You know, you, 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 you. <laughs> yeah, Mariah's a very smart little girl who's learning many tricks. She's very energetic and a sucker for any kind of treats. Kind of goes without saying. Oh, and then there's Amelia and Alice. These two cats are going to bring your family just double love. Those big eyes there. Great cuddlers, twice as much and as many purrs and cheek rubs. The only thing more heartwarming than love of a pet is two. Two-year-old girls have developed special friendship at the shelter, and the Humane Society doesn't want to, you know, separate them. And two cats are basically 
the same as one. You know, they use the same litter box. Uh, so you can also uh, join in on the Pass the Leash Challenge in support of dogs and cats at the San Antonio Humane Society. You and your pet could be featured in the upcoming live virtual event, Friends for Life 2020. For more information on how to participate, please visit sahumane.org, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 2267461. Look at that big one there. Yay. Again, it's a kind of a pass to, to talk baby talk with dogs, right? It is. It's Thank necessary. you. It's necessary. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, beautiful view. Oh my gosh, the sunset from the south side yesterday. Absolutely spectacular. Some folks, uh, there was a nice breeze that popped up, kind of an outflow from some of the showers and thunderstorms that popped up late in the afternoon. Again, some folks saw some rain, some didn't. Today we got one more chance, then we're going to kind of put that on the back burner as far as any rain chances the next few days. 76 in town, uh, 70 Bernie stage, low 70s out there in the hill country. Temperatures are at normal as of right now, or just one degree above that. And the reason why it's a bit more pleasant this morning, the dew points are down. So it's not that uh, just steam bath kind of humidity out there. So we don't really have that much, if at all, uh, any of a heat index. And I don't believe it. There are no 80s on the map right now as far as any heat index readings, which I think that's been forever since we've seen that, it seems like. So the rain yesterday is was this uh, low right here, and it's continuing to kind of move its way out of the area. Um, I think it's still uh, around enough. There's still enough uh, agitation from this thing to where we will get a couple of more showers and thunderstorms popping up a uh, few and far between again. But then this is going to continue to kind of get out of the picture, fall apart, and then that's going to take any rain chances with it for the next couple of days. But we will get rain to return going in toward the weekend. All right, tropics. Uh, this is the latest disturbance out here. It is not tropical depression number nine. It is potential tropical. I guess there's a new category that they came up with, but this is potential tropical depression number nine. And if anything, it would head in toward uh, Florida once we get in toward the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. And whether it uh, develops is still a, kind of a wait to be seen situation. Uh, as far as the rain, again, we've got a couple of scattered showers around the area later on today, mainly along the, uh, the kind of south and east of I-35, sort of where we've seen in the past few days, thanks to the flow off the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. South to, south to southeasterly wind about 10 to 15 miles per hour. 98 high temperature above normal by about a couple of degrees or so with a few showers out there. It's going to feel like it's well into the low hundreds today. And that will be the case. So all of these numbers add three, four degrees to them. And that's what it's going to feel like in the afternoons. Um, a couple of showers scattered about tomorrow, Friday, probably not. And then a little bit better chance, probably of these seven days, the best chance of rain, albeit small, is going to be on Saturday. Uh, Sarah is telling us that this next name storm name looks tricky, but is actually pretty easy. It's Isa Eas. Isa Eas. Yes, we were kind of discussing that the other day. Okay. It's like <laughs> she's she's that. training us. She's training us. If, 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 yes. If, if, yeah. Yeah. See, there. You so did yes. it. You. You. I didn't think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't make it too difficult. As soon as I see it, it's in. Yeah, whatever Sarah's in. <laughs> 552, 76 degrees. Up next, fans of Russell Crowe will want to keep an eye out for his next big screen performance which finds him playing a rather scary individual. We'll have a preview of Unhinged just ahead. Well, that's where we are in this world today. We seem to have developed a fundamental inability to apologize to anyone for anything. Russell Crowe plays a dangerously deranged man triggered by a road rage incident in the thriller Unhinged. But with this movie, with all the tension that's on screen, the actual set energy was really chilled and really just purposeful. And so it's funny how that can happen sometimes, you know. I don't even think you really know what a bad day is. But you're going to find out. When you're playing a character so devoid of humanity where you cannot access the things that you would normally access in your job, um, it, make, it does make it more difficult, you know. Having a kind of a hard time lately. I'm sorry. His detachment, his failure in certain areas, you know, have drained him of that humanity that we all rely on when communicating with people and stuff. And so, 
Yeah, it was it was a, a tricky character from that point of view. Karen Pistorius, who plays the target of the unhinged man, also found the production challenging. We were filming, um, you know, just before the hurricane season. So you probably know it's, it gets just crazy sweltering hot. And um, we were stuck in this little old, well, you know, vintage uh, Volvo. And so then, you know, that mixed with the climate, mixed with the sort of heavy breathing day, day in and day out um, was really intense. What do you want? I need you to learn what a bad day really is. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, it's time for another Katie Science Lab. This week, Katie's making her own lava lamp. If you want to follow along, here are some things you'll need. Water, clear plastic bottle, vegetable oil, food coloring, and Alka-Seltzer. Katie will try out the experiment at live, uh, live rather, today at 9. Still ahead in the next half hour of Good Morning San Antonio, Mayor Ron Nierberg among those reacting negatively to state leaders' choices on whether to reopen schools this fall, what the mayor is saying about all the confusion and mixed messages. Trans Guide, Officer Nick Solis is here keeping an eye on things for you as you prepare to head out and get your Wednesday going. We'll start it off on a right note with your top stories next. Firefighters pulled two people out of a burning building this morning. We'll have an update on their condition and tell you what caused that fire just north of downtown. The race for a coronavirus cure. I'm Alex Brashay in Washington, coming up why some health experts believe we might have a vaccine by the end of the year. And if you step outside this morning and you feel like it's a little cooler, you're not going crazy. It's a tiny bit less muggy this morning at 76 degrees. Mike will let you know about that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Rise and shine. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, July 29th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We've made it halfway through the week. We have, and it does feel a little bit more comfortable out there. And of course, this is all relative humidity. Right. Speaking. Oh, exactly. But, but you know, it's funny when you said tiny bit. It's funny how just a tiny little bit in a, a drop in a degree or two in temperature and a drop degree or two in those dew point temperatures makes all the difference in the world. I did the same thing you've been talking about. Walked outside, I was like, huh. this, this is not bad this morning. I mean, it's still humid, but nowhere near what it was yesterday. So obviously we can't see it too well, but we've got some clouds hanging around here right now. And uh, we'll keep those around throughout the morning hours and then see more sunshine later on today. Uh, yesterday, of course, we had some beautiful showers that popped up. As a matter of fact, some of those storms threw out some pretty good um, outflow boundaries. That's why it got windy later on in the afternoon, uh, evening hours in some areas. The uh, wind really started to pick up. And we'll have the same situation today. Now, obviously, there's nothing really showing up on radar as of right now. But notice the spin in the clouds right here. These are kind of dropping down to the... Uh, south almost and these are kind of coming up to the north there's a counterclockwise spin that little bit of a low which was parked over in kind of south of houston yesterday that is enough to get the keep the atmosphere churned up a little bit you get some of these uh, showers right now around corpus christi and more of these will develop as the afternoon sort of uh, heats up around here mold is on the high side it doubled more than doubled from the previous day's reading and uh it's probably going to be sticking around with some of this humidity that uh, even though it's a little bit lower this morning will definitely be sticking around. So this morning we'll stay in the mid to upper 70s around here and throughout the rest of the morning. Uh, once the clouds finally start to break up a little bit, we'll warm up to right around 90 at noon and continue up into the upper 90s. Normal high temperature right now is 96. Yep, we're going to be a few degrees above that. Got to factor in the humidity, so it's going to make that 98 feel more like the uh, low hundreds. But at least one or two showers out there. If you don't get any today, we're going to have to wait a few days. Although maybe a slightly better rain chance going in toward the weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis. And boy, still looks like nothing going on. Uh, the accidents like those stray showers are stray. And every now and then we're getting an accident this morning. But other than that, things are looking good out there. This accident we have here is going to be East Loop 1604 at I-10 East. Uh, it's causing a little bit of traffic build up there. It's orange going towards, is eastbound 1604 going towards I-10. Looks like it's a one vehicle 
accident. Hopefully that gets cleared up soon, but it is causing a little bit of traffic build up there at that intersection. Construction here, they're starting to pick this up westbound I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. I did see that they are picking the construction barrels up. One lane is open now, but still expect a little delay until all that construction is cleared up westbound I-10 from 1604. Here is 10 Ber uh, Bernie Stage Road looking okay right now, but there it is. 10 at Hewerman open one lane and look how it's clogging up traffic there. Expect a delay. 10 and Dominion the same. Still looking a little heavy. All right, everyone. Y'all have a safe day. Wear that seatbelt. Go the speed limit. And Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Officer Nick. Well, new this morning, firefighters needed to pull two people out of a building fire just north of downtown. Battalion Chief says it happened around 1.30 this morning above the Reggae Bar near San Pedro in Cyprus. He says a window air conditioning unit caught fire in an apartment above the bar. That apartment building is abandoned, but two people were inside of it at the time of the fire. Firefighters say both of them were not injured and they were able to get them out. San Antonio police investigating a shooting on the city's northwest side. Officers tell us it happened around 11 last night, the 4800 block of Gus Eckert. That's by Fredericksburg Road. Police say a woman called saying she heard gunshots and a man yelling that he had been shot. Police say they later found the man outside of University Hospital with a gunshot wound to the knee. He's currently being treated at the hospital. A suspect is now in custody following a shooting that happened back in June. According to an arrest affidavit, 38 year old Terrence Clay is accused of shooting two vehicles at a gas station in the 1200 block of WW White Road. That's not too far from Highway 87 on the east side. Police say they found two victims whose vehicles had been shot. The affidavit says Clay was an ex-boyfriend of one of the victims. He was taken into custody and is facing charges of deadly conduct with a firearm. After starting the week with no deaths, local health officials say 12 more people have died from COVID-19. They also report more than 1,500 new cases of the virus here in Bear County. The jump in cases came as a surprise to many because the county has averaged only a few hundred over the past few days. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the sudden spike is due to testing backlogs and he will start adjusting how cases are reported, reported in Bear County. In our next half hour, we will hear local officials break down the issue with testing backlogs and how they will address it going forward. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says state leaders are putting lives at risk because of their indecision on reopening schools this fall. Yesterday, Attorney General Ken Paxton said local health officials have no authority to shut down all schools. Shortly after that announcement, the Texas Education Edu Agency said it will not fund school districts that keep classrooms closed because of local health mandates. Districts that want to stay on virtual learning past four weeks must get TEA approval if they want to receive funding. However, that's a change from what they announced a few weeks ago. Every time it seems that our attorney general appears on the scene during this pandemic, it creates confusion and chaos and it leaves a wake. And that confusion and chaos uh, could cost lives this fall. We're hoping with the outreach and with conversations with them and, uh, and unfortunately having to deal with the, with the litigation that was filed by Cornerstone, uh, our expectation is that we will get compliance, voluntary compliance uh, by the private and religious affiliated schools. There's no attempt at all to stifle any religious messaging or any rel or practice of religion. The city attorney says he hopes schools voluntarily follow local health guidelines. However, he says noncompliance could result in citations to more extreme measures. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott says the decision to reopen schools this fall falls on local governments. The clock is ticking for a coronavirus vaccine as cases continue to surge across the country. Documents from FEMA show nationwide deaths from the virus have increased by 30% over the last week. But there's renewed optimism as a second promising vaccine trial gets underway this week. ABC's Alex Brache has more. Good morning. So here's something that's really kind of putting this race for a vaccine into perspective. Authorities say that COVID-19 is killing an American every minute and a half. This morning, there's renewed optimism in the search for a coronavirus cure. Moderna's vaccine test is showing promise. Seven of eight primates injected with the vaccine showed no detectable virus in their lungs just two days after exposure. The company is now in the critical final phase of human trials, with pharmaceutical giant Pfizer hot on its heels. The clock is ticking, especially in places like Florida, the state marking its deadliest 24 hours yet, 191 lives lost. This report from the White House Coronavirus Task Force urges 21 states dubbed outbreak red zones to put more restrictions in place. It wasn't just me being an outliner. 
Dr. Birx was saying the same thing, that one is universal wearing of masks, avoid crowds, close the bars. But despite the messages from his top health experts, President Trump is once again downplaying the COVID-19 threat and spreading misinformation on a discredited treatment. Uh, many doctors think it is extremely successful, the hydroxychloroquine. Joe Biden firing back. People are losing faith in what the president says. And it's not just Joe Biden taking aim at the president's claims about hydroxychloroquine. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the overwhelming prevailing clinical trials have found it not effective against the coronavirus. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 609 and 76 degrees. Great news for his fans. They got a win before restarting the regular season in the NBA bubble. A highlights and reaction from their win over the Pacers. And we'll tell you when you can watch them next. Many graduates are feeling the pressure of paying back student loans, but there are ways to manage your stress and your finances at the same time. Join us after the break where we go over how to pay off your debt to school. Outside with live cam, Mike's midweek forecast coming up. We'll check back in with Officer Nick Solis from SAPD. It is no secret that the inability to pay off student loan debt can add extra stress to our lives. Even though the pandemic has impacted the economy, federal student loans have been halted until September of this year. To get you prepared for the repayments, Max Massey has some tips on how to tackle those student loans. Getting a college education is important, but the costs associated with it can be overwhelming. If you find yourself struggling, Consumer Affairs has some tips to make it a little easier. First, make a realistic budget when it comes to loans. It's always best to pay back what you can afford each month rather than emptying your wallet. It can also help to keep track of your monthly payments. Next, try exploring income contingent repayment plans. Most of the time, your monthly payment will exceed the amount you can afford. If that's the case, the federal government offers options that may lower your monthly payments. This may take longer to pay back your loans, but a little still goes a long way. You can also try applying for a job with student debt forgiveness. Several companies offer positions that include this, but most have strict rules in the contract, like working for a specific amount of time. If you're unsure if your current company has this plan, check with your HR department about benefits they might offer. Lastly, refinance your loans into a private loan. Experts say this can be an easy way to lower your interest rate. If you have a stable job or decent credit score, ask your bank about refinancing options. Before you make a commitment, it is important to do your research and talk to your loan providers. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's just about 615. Officer Nick, how's it looking out there with traffic? It's looking great, Sarah. So the construction has cleared up on I-10. Looks like they've opened two lanes out of those three lanes on westbound uh, I-10 at Bernie Stage Road. That's good news there. And the accident we had at 1604 and East Loop, uh, East Loop 1604 and I-10 is now clear. So good news there as well. Let's go straight to the Trans Guide. 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds looking great. 10 West at 1604 on the northwest side looking good as well. 1604 and Tradesman down the highway there. Great, and let's do one more. 37 at Jones on the southeast side, flowing very smoothly. Thank you very much, Nick. Post Hannah, even every day this week so far, we've had very few far between showers and storms. A couple days ago, you said you got uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of rain. I got a little bit of shower, and I have a theory that when we have these scattered showers, it always rains on 35 between downtown, just right to Live Oak always get a scattered shower and any time of day I'm driving on that area in that area on 35. Was there some yesterday too? No, oh. <laughs> no, no yesterday, <laughs> but the last three days I've always gotten some showers on 35. Inter that's interesting and most are you know to the east of I-35 and I didn't see any but then of course some of those uh, showers thunderstorms yesterday put out some nice breezes late in the afternoon. I saw them in the distance yes late yesterday afternoon. and this may be what it looked like there mm -hmm. beautiful thunderstorms that uh, were popping up but then like I said, a lot of folks didn't see any rain we have another chance today then rain chances are kind of going to be out of the picture for a while. All right, normal temperatures. The average high temperature this time of year is 96 degrees. Normal low is right around uh, 75. And once we get into the 7th, then we're going to be seeing the normal get up to 97 degrees and that's going to last for about uh, 10 days up until the 16th of August and then normal temperatures are going to drop off fairly quickly once we get in toward the the first of September. So you notice how it took uh, well, about a 
month and a half to go from 94 up to 97, then we'll drop down within about two weeks. So it does drop off fairly quickly, but now that doesn't mean actual temperatures are going to be dropping off that much, but at least we're kind of over the hump once we get into the latter part of August. All right, so dew point temperature this morning is at 71 degrees, which yes, it is still humid. You get above 70, you really start to feel the humidity, and this doesn't seem like a lot, but it's three degrees below what it was at this time yesterday, uh, four degrees lower than what it was in New Braunfels. Again, these aren't huge numbers, but with the dew point, it makes all the difference in the world, and that's why you step outside this morning. It's like, okay, it's not bad out here as of right now. Uh, nothing really is showing up on radar at the moment, and we've got some of these showers down here to the southeast, and they're moving up to the north, and there's this kind of uh, counterclockwise rotation. There's a little bit of a low centered just to the west of Laredo, and that's going to help to pull in some more of these showers uh, throughout the afternoon hours. So we'll continue to see maybe a couple of them popping up around here, perhaps on 35 to hold uh, Sarah's theory true. Uh, nothing going through the morning hours and the rest of the morning commute around here. And then by noon, a couple more are going to continue to pop up along the, uh, the coastal plain and mid afternoon. We'll still see a few more. So as the afternoon heats up, more of these are going to be developing, working their way on in here. And by dinner time, there'll be a few more. But again, don't count on it. about a 20% chance for a few showers around here. There's that little bit of a low in between, like I said yesterday, sort of split in the uprights between those two areas of high pressure. That sticks around through the rest of today and then sort of fizzles on out. And that's why the rain chances kind of go out of the picture tomorrow as well as on Friday. And then Saturday, what's going to be interesting is this high is really dominant off to the west of us. And we get this northerly flow around here. Now, a lot of times, you know, we get in the fall, we love to see this kind of pattern to bring fronts through. That's not going to be the situation, but it does look like there's going to be enough of a disturbance coming down here from the north to give us a slightly better chance for some rain by Saturday. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, southerly wind about 10, 15 miles per hour throughout the day, and then a high temperature today. It's going to be another hot one up to 98, a couple of degrees above the normal high, and with the humidity, at about oh, four or five degrees to that is what it's going to feel like up in the low hundreds and pretty much take rain chances out of the picture in the next couple of days. But uh, Saturday is looking, I don't know if I want to say promising, but that's the better chance. Not great, but for the next seven days, that's uh, the best shot at some rain on Saturday. Potentially promising. Yes. <laughs> Hedging so, the bets. Yeah, you don't want to get hopes too high. I know. That, that's I know. the problem with I know this. you don't like anybody yeah. letting anybody down. Thank you, Mike. Right now it's 619, 76 degrees. The Miami Marlins are dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. Four more players have reportedly tested positive, forcing Major League Baseball to cancel games. We'll have more in your GMA First Look. <clears throat> Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein with nutrients to support immune health. At Safe Flight, we're committed to taking care of you and your car. We'll fix it right with no contact service you can trust. So if you have auto glass damage, stay safe with Safe Flight. Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace. Ever since I got this little guy, I felt like I was just constantly cleaning up his hair. Then I got my paws on the Super Sweeper. It's a game changer. These heavy-duty dry cloths pick up a crazy amount of hair. This is all you. We stopped cleaning and started swiffering. Feel the cool rush of Claritin Cool Mint Chewables. Powerful 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief plus an immediate cooling sensation for your throat. Feel the clarity and live Claritin Clear. In this morning's GMA First Look, America's national pastime versus the pandemic. The Major League Baseball season just started. The Miami Marlins season has already stopped for now. After an outbreak of COVID-19 in the Marlins clubhouse, MLB has put the Marlins season on hold. Oh, boy. The Marlins were supposed to play the Washington Nationals this weekend. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm scared. Right now, you don't know, if, you know because of my heart condition, 
what happens you know, to me if I do get it. This all comes just six days after the start of the long-delayed MLB season. I think it's the, the shell shock component is how quickly it deteriorated. So can this baseball season survive these setbacks? And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll talk live to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver as the NBA gets set to tip off their regular season. With your GMA First Look, I'm T.J. Holmes, ABC News, New York. To the NBA now, and the San Antonio Spurs have their first win inside the NBA bubble, topping the Pacers in that third and final scrimmage yesterday. Spurs win 118-111. The younger players were still prominently featured in the game, particularly 20-year-old Keldon Johnson, who scored 20 points. Some notes on the game. Spurs fans still have not seen Patty Mills on the court for any minutes during the scrimmages. It was also another game where Coach Pop took a back seat. Will Hardy, who interviewed for the Knicks head coaching job, called the shots. And here's what he had to say about Keldon Johnson's performance. Keldon tonight was special with his energy. You know, he's a... He's a really hardworking kid and, and brings a spark of, of energy and life when he comes off the bench. So uh, his defense tonight, him getting out in transition was huge for us. The scrimmage is now over, which means the games start to count. Spurs reopen the regular season Friday against the Sacramento Kings at 7 o'clock San Antonio time. It'll be the first of an eight-game stretch in which the Spurs need to pass the Grizzlies for the eighth spot in the Western Conference to make the playoffs. They currently sit four games out. In your morning consumer news, San Antonio breweries are feeling the effect of a can shortage affecting the nation. The shortage exists because of an increased demand for aluminum cans as more people are having drinks at home amid the pandemic. Greg Spickler with the Alamo Beer Company says draft sales across the country have dropped. And Lester Jones with the National Beer Wholesalers Association says the problem is simply demand exceeding supply. We have a hard time getting our 12-ounce sleek cans because of the seltzer craze. Um, but as far as our 12-ounce uh, standard beer can, we're able to get those right now at the moment um, because we're getting a blank can and we're putting a label on it. Um, if we were a brewery who had a printed can, we would be experiencing some extremely long lead times. So in 2019, we had a shortage of some seltzers because they, they had planned to make only so much of it and demand had exceeded those plants. And here we are again in 2020, and demand has exceeded what they planned for. Spickler says Alamo beer sales have gone down, but the company is still offering curbside options and is still selling products at HEB. Best Buy is the latest store to announce it will close on Thanksgiving Day. Comes as the pandemic changes how customers buy goods, shopping more online and less in stores. Best Buy says it plans to offer its best deals of the season earlier than ever. AMC and Universal Studios have reached a deal triggered by the pandemic. They've agreed to dramatically shorten the time films must play in theaters before reaching an on demand. Movies will now play in theaters for just 17 days before hitting streaming services. Right now it is 626, 76 degrees. CEOs of some of the biggest tech companies will be on Capitol Hill today. We will learn more about the questions Congress plans to ask them about monopolizing the market. And setting a goal should not be reserved for just New Year's. We'll go over to set realistic goals and stick to them. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on GMSA. We have so much more ahead. Let's take a look outside with Trans Guy 281 and, oh, well, I missed it, 35 and Thousand Oaks. Traffic is pretty smooth out there. Officer Nick Solis will tell you more about that, and Mike will have his forecast when we come back. Things get especially hot inside this apartment building, and firefighters say an AC unit is to blame. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. Please note that the cases reported daily don't necessarily reflect the 24-hour period of infection. Uh, and starting tomorrow, we're going give, to be giving you a, a daily update on the seven-day rolling average, which will be a more reliable number to track uh, the total infections. That was Ron Nirenberg explaining what will change after a large jump of COVID-19 cases were reported yesterday. In a few minutes, we will learn why the number of infections increased by more than 1,000 in Bear County. Outside with live cam, if you're just now waking up, the sun is trying to come up, and it feels a little more comfy out there in regards to the humidity. We'll leave the details to Mike Ostrage. Good morning. It is midweek, Wednesday, July 29th. Thank you so much for starting your hump day with us this morning. We have made it to the middle of the week. And I've enjoyed being a little cooler, not, you know, that 
triple digit that we're really used to. That's right. Real quick, we need to check traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Nothing to check, Mark. Things are looking good out there right now. Drive times are great. Yeah, so it, pretty much in agreement, it does feel a little bit nicer out there this morning. Dew points are down a little bit from yesterday, therefore the humidity is down somewhat, and that's what makes all the difference in the world. And it's also nice to see, you can see that barely that little bit of a glow right there along the horizon as the sun is thinking about uh, coming up. So we're also at 76 degrees as opposed to upper 70s and no 80s on this map right now. We've got some 60s in parts of the hill country. Normal low temperature 75, so we're close to that as of right now. And uh, Molda is definitely on the high side, 29.30, more than doubled from the previous day's reading. So we got, you know, warm. It is still humid out there, obviously, but not anywhere near like what it was yesterday. Partly cloudy, a couple of showers. Are possible maybe a storm today and uh, upper 90s then uh, tomorrow plenty of sunshine a little bit hotter you know upper 90s and we're going to be looking at 99 a lot of hundreds around the area tomorrow as well as on Friday. Then we get into the weekend and there's going to be a few showers around. We have sort of a break in any sort of rain chances tomorrow and Friday, but uh, especially Saturday, we've got a slightly better chance for some rain on Saturday. Don't get your hopes really high, but at least it's a little bit better than even today's rain chance. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic once again. And yeah, I mean, other than some minor stuff, has it really been any yeah, Big accidents out there today. Nothing, Mike. Not a bad start for Wednesday, especially if, for you. If you're heading out to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. A lot of green on the screen. Construction's picked up. Uh, things are looking great out there on the highways. Just look at, look at these drive times. Eastbound I-10 from FM 46 to 1604, 37 minutes. Which sounds like a big number, but that's, that's actually really good. And if you're eastbound I-10 from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes, great times there. All right, taking a look outside at the transit guide, 1604 at Tradesman looking good. 37 at Jones on the southeast side looking even better. Look at that left lanes flowing smoothly there. 281 at Grayson, great, great, uh, looking great. And 281 at 410 near the airport flowing smoothly. So things look good out there, everyone. Just make sure to wear that seatbelt, go to the speed limit, and get to work safely. Mark. Thanks, Nick. An abandoned apartment was full of trouble for San Antonio firefighters. It was the site of an overnight fire just north of downtown. Our Katrina Weber is in the 800 block of San Pedro with a live report. Katrina, good morning. You mentioned earlier that firefighters were blaming a faulty AC unit. How did that cause that fire if no one was living there? Well, they say that it wasn't an abandoned building, but they did find two homeless people inside. Now, we don't know if they were trying to perhaps use that AC, uh, AC unit or if perhaps it just uh, sparked out on its own and caused the fire. Now, either way, it did cause a lot of smoke inside this building here in the 800 block of San Pedro. Firefighters saw it pouring out of the window when they arrived just before 1.30 this morning. They put out the fire, but weren't taking any chances with it rekindling. They did a thorough check of the roof just to make sure they hadn't missed anything. Now, this building also is home to the reggae bar uh, as well as another business, but it does not appear that the fire spread to either of those or caused any damage there. Reporting live north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Bear County saw the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases shoot up yesterday with health officials reporting more than 1,500 new infections. That is nearly 1,100 more than the previous day. However, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the total does not necessarily represent a 24-hour period. He says the increase could show new cases from the past week. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says there is a reason why the cases could be representative of the past week rather than one day. The federal government never took control of testing, never took control of the labs. They allowed a free enterprise system to just suck up supplies. Everybody competed with each other. So that resulted in this 67-day delay. So when we hear, see a number like that, we're really looking a little bit into the past, we don't, but we don't know precisely how far back in the past. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says he and other local officials will no longer just give the daily increase of COVID-19 cases at the daily press conference briefings. He says he will give a daily update on the seven day rolling average. The mayor says he will, he says those numbers will give a more reliable way to track cases in our community. In your morning headlines, CEOs of the world's biggest technology companies will be on Capitol Hill today. 
The historic hearing in front of Congress will help lawmakers determine if companies like Google and Amazon have too much power in the market. ABC's Alex Preche has details. This morning, the chief executives for the world's biggest tech companies preparing to appear on Capitol Hill for a historic antitrust hearing. Amazon's Jeff Bezos, Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, Apple's Tim Cook, and Google's Sundar Pichai, a group that includes two of the world's richest men. They're expected to face questions over whether the size of their companies stifle competition. In his prepared statement obtained by ABC News, Zuckerberg will tell lawmakers that companies aren't bad just because they're big, adding Facebook became successful the American way by starting out with nothing and providing products that people find valuable. Zuckerberg telling a Senate committee two years ago that Facebook has a lot of competitors. It's Apps to the, email the same to service you provide. Well, we is, provide a number of different services. Is Twitter the same as what you do? It overlaps with a portion of what we do. You don't think you have a monopoly? Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like that to me. Okay. <laughs> Bezos, who's never testified in front of Congress before, will focus on his personal background in his prepared remarks, calling himself a garage inventor who, as a teenager, invented an automatic gate closer out of cement-filled tires, a solar cooker out of an umbrella and tinfoil, and alarms made from baking pans to entrap my siblings. Some lawmakers have repeatedly argued for the breakup of big tech companies, including Senator Elizabeth Warren. You don't get to be the umpire and have a team in the game. But many financial experts insist big tech companies benefit the economy, including the vice chairman of Morgan Stanley, who recently told CNBC, what would we have done during the pandemic if we didn't have companies like Amazon? As for Apple's Tim Cook, he's expected to address criticism over Apple's App Store, which is the only way that iPhone users can download apps. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. With less than 100 days until the election, presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden says he will choose his running mate next week. The former vice president made the comments during a news conference after a speech in Wilmington, Delaware yesterday. Biden did not indicate whether he would publicly announce his selection, though he will likely do so before the Democratic National Convention starts August 17. Biden has said he will choose a woman as a running mate and has faced pressure from the party to choose a woman of color. Well, thousands of pilgrims are starting the ritual of the Muslim Hajj in Mecca today. Saudi Arabia has scaled down the annual pil pilgrimage from the 2.5 million that attended last year amid the coronavirus pandemic. Saudi Arabia has the highest number of coronavirus cases in the Arab world. There have been over 270,000 cases and almost 2,800 deaths so far. The country has kept its borders and airports closed since the start of the pandemic. The pandemic creating more issues in our community, including unemployment and domestic violence. And there's potential these issues could lead to an increase in child abuse and neglect. That's why our KSAC community partners and the Children's Shelter are teaming up for a child abuse awareness town hall today. We'll have a panel of experts answering questions about the signs of abuse, how to report it, and where to seek help. Again, it airs today from 2 to 3, and you can watch at KSAT.com or wherever you stream your KSAT TV app. Thank you so much for starting your day with us here on KSAT 12. It is 639, 76 degrees. It's no secret that setting goals help lead to a happier life, but deciding what to make a goal can be tough. After the break, we will look at how to realistically set those goals. Right now on KSAT.com, our back to school page is up and has everything you need to know as you try to navigate what school districts are doing because of coronavirus. We have a running list of all the start dates by district as well as answering the questions you want to know, especially about possible risk. We also have details about an HEB coupon that will save teachers up to $50 off school and office supplies and the latest on tax-free weekend, which will take place August 7th through the 9th. Back to school will look different this year as some districts are delaying the start of in-person school and starting off virtually. We also want to hear from you. Parents and educators can be a part of our classroom confessionals. We already have a long list of responses that we've posted and you still have time to enter yours. Our back to school coverage will continue over the next several weeks and you can find all the latest on ksat.com slash back to school. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We are a long way from January and New Year's resolutions, but it's never too late to set new goals for yourself. As Stephanie Cerna tells us, setting realistic goals can lead to a happier, better life. 
2020 is well underway and most people set new goals at the beginning of the year. But if you find yourself unhappy in your current situation, making changes might be easier than you think. Based on a study in Switzerland, setting attainable goals is key to living a better life. Whether it's your career or personal growth, starting with small goals is the way to go. First, write down a few things you can incorporate into your daily routine, and most importantly, stick to it. That's because when goals are more realistic, they are easier to achieve and gives us a sense of accomplishment. Experts found people who set more attainable goals are more likely to feel in control of their lives. And it doesn't matter your age or the importance of the goal. Participants in the study say they were happier when their goals were within reach. So the next time you set goals for yourself, start small. Think about little things you want to accomplish. And remember, the sky's the limit. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Our immediate short-term goal, check on traffic. How are our traffic goals looking? Uh, looking good right now if you're headed uh, down 160435. But if you are headed towards uh, Space Center Drive in Industry Park, got an accident there. Minor accident, not going to affect traffic. Just keep that in mind. I know that's a high used area there, so just uh, please be careful if you're headed that way. All right, looking at this construction. This is 90 and 36 here. Looks like there's a little bit of construction there, and the exit ramp it's looking like from 36 to get on 90 is closed down. Keep that in mind as well if you are heading that way. And at 35 and 410, flowing smoothly. 35 at Evans, looking great. And we'll do one more here. 35 and 1604, looking amazing. Thank you very much, Nick. As Mike adjusts some things on his computer, we've got a KSAT Connect picture that makes Medina Lake look like the Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, yeah this is absolutely great. I was trying to pop up the uh, live cam right now as well to mm -hmm. compare it, but how beautiful is that? Too gorgeous not to share, as the caption says. We agree. Gosh. Mm -hmm. Hot and candy sunsets. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness, great. Good. Yeah, that is just beautiful. And there's a couple little puffy clouds there in the background and just how still the water is. That's, I, I can imagine being out there. It's tranquil enough just looking at the picture. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, so warm and humid, although not as bad as what it was yesterday, this morning when you step outside. And we're going to be up to about 90 at noon today. And then partly cloudy skies. We will continue to see uh, temperatures get up into the upper 90s then later on today. Boy, I'm just having all sorts of fun here. And come on, computer. Come on. Please. Try that. Sure. Or just kick the computer, one of the two. So uh, we will be at the 90 at noon. There we go. And then upper 90s later on this afternoon. A stray shower or two is possible. And we will continue. Hit it again. Did I? Well, I don't know what's going on here. And uh, any rain that does pop up is going to be uh, just dying down. It's going to be you know kind of a, a sultry evening. 72 degrees uh, is the dew point temperature. So it is, I mean, it's still humid out there, but we do have lower dew points than what we had yesterday. So it is a bit more comfortable out there. And of course, we had some of those showers that popped up yesterday. Obviously, they did die down. And then you look down to the south a little bit more, and there is a bit of a uh, kind of a rotation around there. And we're already starting to see a few of these showers moving in uh, right there along Corpus Christi. And those are going to continue to sort of uh, hopefully develop, especially off to the east a little bit, you know, kind of scattered about uh, throughout the rest of the uh, the afternoon with the afternoon heating. And there's the center of that circulation right there. And that's the um, kind of a little bit of a low. And so it's moving out of here, but still close enough to give us a couple of those showers. So as we go through time this morning, obviously we've got some of the clouds around here. And then by later on this afternoon, this tends to broad brush things a, a bit, but we will continue to see some of those showers popping up here. Going into the next couple of days then, yeah, maybe uh, a stray shower Thursday, Friday. I mean, rain chances are almost zilch, uh, perhaps just along the coastal plain. But Saturday, watch what happens here. And you can see that we do get uh, a little bit better chance for a couple of these showers. There's actually a disturbance that's going to be sliding down here from the north, and that's going to uh, give us... A, like I said, a little bit better chance for a couple of showers on Saturday. I think hold temperatures down a couple of degrees as well. So can we jump to the uh, forecast page right now? What I will tell you, though, is we are going to be up to uh, 98 degrees uh, later on today. And there's that low that is uh, giving us the uh, little bit of a chance for some rain. we got to kind of go through this thing, having a little bit of computer problem here. I don't know if we can pop through there or not. So, yeah, I've just got nothing as far as a... a uh, 
little clicker working here today and uh, we are going to be getting up into like I said 98 degrees today and then we're going to make it up into the upper 90s the next couple of days rain chances pretty much go out of the uh, picture the next couple of days and then the slightly better chance for shower two on Saturday. There you got your I'd forecast. Say, boy, nothing like having a policeman around. I know. Great teamwork. Thank you, officer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mike with all his cues. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Thank you very much, Mike. 650, 76 degrees. Businesses and schools are constantly adapting to the pandemic. One of the ways they are doing so is by using new technology. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at a local company making thermal scanners that allow for contact-free temperature checks. Outside with LiCam, news you need to know before you go straight ahead. Good morning, coming up on GMA, an ABC News exclusive. JetBlue gives us a first look at its innovative UV light cleaning system designed to help kill COVID germs on planes in just 10 minutes. Will this new technology make flying safer? That plus a whole lot more coming up only on GMA. See you all soon. No one was supposed to be living here, but firefighters say they found two people and fire inside this abandoned building. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. The fire broke out just before 1.30 this morning. There was smoke pouring out of the windows when firefighters arrived here in the 800 block of San Pedro Avenue. They put out the fire, then double checked for possible hot spots on the roof. They told us they found two homeless people inside the apartment upstairs, which was supposed to be abandoned. Those people were not hurt. Firefighters say a faulty air conditioning unit appears to be what caused the fire. Now, if you look, this apartment is just above the reggae bar here on San Pedro. The firefighters say it does not appear that the bar had any damage from the fire. Reporting from north of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, time for another Katie Science Lab. This week, Katie's making her own Greg Brady lava lamp. Mine was, I remember my lava lamp, it was red. If you want to follow along, here are the ingredients you need. Water, a clear plastic bottle, vegetable oil, food coloring, and Alka-Seltzer. Katie will try out the experiment live. You don't want to miss it today at 9. Can't wait to see it. 5 till, here's Nick with the latest on Time Saver traffic. Yeah, Mark, I had another accident come up. This is eastbound Wurzbach Parkway near Vista del Norte Drive. Uh, looks like a two-vehicle accident. Be careful here, Wurzbach Parkway. Very dangerous, even when dry. Uh, watch this accident and control your speed when passing it up. Mike? And before you make that reference, make sure, does Katie know who Greg Brady is? From? Sure she does. From the Brady Bunch? You, you know who it is? Patriots quarterback? Uh, yeah, we'll make sure Katie knows. <laughs> Patriots what, did, what did Nick say? <laughs> Patriots quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Brady. Yeah, it's Tom Brady's brother. So. Oh, oh, okay, got it, got he it. He went to Michigan State, not Michigan. Uh, anyway, uh, we do. <laughs> What's up, folks? Uh, cloudy skies. Uh, we have temperatures that are at 76 degrees. Humidity is not bad this morning. I mean, still humid out there, but a little more comfortable than what it was yesterday. 90 at noon, 98 for high temperature, partly cloudy. A couple of showers are possible today, you know, few and far between, and then pretty much take rain out of the picture the next couple of days. Slightly better chance for a few showers on Saturday. All we need is a Brady Bunch on MeTV now, and we're good. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you at GMSA at 9.